Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivory Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 49. Another week for us England fans. Yes, it's looking like a week where, you know, we could be left disappointed or we could continue to have a good week and, ha and have a lovely time. But guys, again, we are back. Again, if you're new to the show, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, remember to share. And if you're wondering, what the hell is this? And why am I on this live stream while France is playing? This is a stream where, you, of course, we talk about our beloved nation, England. Also, we discuss the um, news surrounding England. And also, we talk about Euros. So you're in the right place, guys. And first of all, let me introduce my guys. I've got Amok, my co-host, who's here today. We've also got Munzi, who's making his second appearance. So bigs up to him. And of course, of course, we've got Francis, special guest, ex-professional football player. Yes, you're technically my first celebrity. So I am happy <laughs> right now, Francis. You're a Z, I'm a Big Z celebrity. What do you call it? Big up to you. <laughs> you are. First of all, Francis... Welcome. How are you doing? How's I'm good. Everything? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for getting me on. Uh, pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Even though the Francis game's on, you know, we've still got <laughs> business to talk about. So it's a pleasure, mate. Most definitely. And Munzi, how you've been? How's the weekend and how's everything? Well, been in isolation for eight days. Everyone's got COVID in the house, apart from me. So yeah, it's been good. <laughs> That's great because I just, I just, I just had my COVID vaccination. Even though I was against COVID vaccine because I'm traveling, I have to get these vaccines out of the way. So yes, I had mine today. I feel good, guys. You know, people do say you might have a slight reaction. We'll see tomorrow morning. But apart from that, I'm doing well. Amok, big ups to you. How was your weekend, bro? My weekend was alright. You know, mm -hmm. good weekend. Obviously, England won. So it's been. Brilliant. Yes, Another good. week. Like you said before, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we want to be happy yep. in looking forward, but we'll see what happens, isn't it? That's fantastic to hear, my bro. But yes, guys, as always, remember to get yourself involved. Smash that like button. So again, get yourself involved in the comments as we start. We will first start off with the game against England versus Czech Republic. England winning 1-0. Raheem Sterling scoring the only goal. England hardly creating a chance against Czechs. Although it's so funny how the Czechs happened to beat the Dutch 2-0 and we struggled to beat the Czechs. Uh, people don't like to compare other teams because you can only play the team that's right in front of you. So it's quite unfair. But yes, England winning 1-0. I'm going to start off with you, Francis. Uh, I just want to get your intake on England's game against um, the Czechs. Yeah, I think we started off really well. We was bright. We've seen, you know, um, what England are capable of um, at times. We've not really seen a lot of it um, in this competition. But uh, I'll probably say we played well for 25 minutes and then the rest of the game was quite dire, to be honest. I think the Czechs were kind of already qualified. So they really didn't get out of first gear. Um, and I thought we were comfortable. So, yeah, I think it was it was quite boring, to be honest, for about 70 minutes. Absolutely, it was a dead game, as most people will say. And it's it's been it's been a funny thing because the last three games of England, except for Croatia, which the first half was was really really good. Apart from that, the following game against Scotland, some people did say it was quite boring. Same thing for Czech. I'm just wondering if it's something that we should be worried about. Amok, let me get your take on England versus the Czech Republic. Um. First of all, I just want to say I'll go with what Oli said in the previous week. I don't care if England win 1-0 and get to the final and win this trophy. I would love that to happen. But in terms of performance, like Francis just said, the first half an hour was decent. Like we actually played very kind of decent football. The players were able to move the ball faster and that's a few quality decent passes. But after that, the game just went. It's like two teams playing because they know they already qualified, and it was kind. Of, it got to a point that it was a bit boring to watch. Remember, I, I remember I made a reference. I said this game is gonna finish one 0 and I said because Ryan Sterling scored. I did say that to you, and that will happen at the end of the match. And all about you, Munzi. 
How did you feel about England versus Czech Republic? Yeah, as, as um, Francis said, it was, you know, first 25 minutes really good. Second half, just boring. Like, phone, phone flicking time, really, isn't it? And he's sitting on Instagram and all that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, oh, I don't, still don't think that two holding midfielders is needed, but, you know, he did it. He played Grealish. Grealish played all right. Um, Sterling, well, he's one of his favourites. But, yeah, he got the goal. Um, Foden, uh, yeah, Foden did play, didn't he? Um, yeah, but it just, you know, I think it, it'd have been better if Mount would have played, but of course, he was isolating. I know how that feels. Um, <laughs> that means, but, um, yeah, just two holding midfielders don't work. It's just, you know, it just bored the game up. But just, as Francis said, they knew they were qualifying, so you know, and as I thought, exactly the same what Ollie said last week, you know, one nil, one nil, one nil, all the way. As long as we win it, one nil. One nil. I know, I know. I know. I would, I would happily take a one nil, one nil, which means that England won't play to the best of their abilities. But I want to ask you guys one question: Is I does is the top double pivot or playing two holding midfielders needed right now? And will we need that against the Germans, guys? <clears throat> no, I, I, I personally don't think we do. I think we've got to attack the Germans. Yeah, you know, they've got a, I don't know how old Hummels is, 58, I don't know. He's old, isn't he? <laughs> he's but, crazy, he's do you know what I mean? He got he got to attack him. He, you know, Mbappe attacked him. I know he was he got back hold of him, but they just attack him. Just attack Pates. You know, you know I know not talking about you know, but you know do as well. Too old in me for you know like, why just attack? You know, attack, attack, attack. But I don't think I think Southgate's on gone into the competition thinking, oh our yeah, yeah, defence is a bit, you know, Pickford's a bit dodgy, Sanzo's a bit dodgy. The defence have been fine. It just needs it's the attackers, which is, for England is not really, don't usually see that, but, you know what I mean, just attack. Best form of, you know, so how are you going to win it? You keep attacking the Germans. You let the Germans attack you, then, you know, it's got to attack them. Yeah, I think, I think that the, the two holding midfielders, because Southgate was a defender, naturally, I think defenders, when they're managers or coaches, are, are negative-minded to concede, how not to concede. Sure. But, by playing two holding midfielders, like I say, United do it. I mean, I hate it um, because to me, when I played against anyone who had two holding midfielders, right. it basically says, come and attack us. We're scared of you. Mm-hmm. Come and attack us. And that sends a negative vibe through the camp and through um, through to the Germans. And they'll be thinking, right, they're playing two defensive midfielders. They're petrified of us. Let's get it out wide, get down the sides. Um, and for me, you just invite pressure. But, you know, if they win 1-0, like the lads were saying, if you get a 1-0, everyone's happy. Don't have to be pretty in competition football. I'm a purist. I like it to be pretty all the time. But, you know, um, if, 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 if we, ain't, we ain't got the players to play Sp- the way Spain play, we ain't got the players to play the way France play, or we don't move the ball like that because we're not good enough to move the ball. So... You know, hence Declan Rice ain't playing in any other world class team. Mm-hmm. He's in there to do a job, and I think Southgate pick. He's probably first on the team sheet, believe it or not, Declan Rice, because he absolutely loves him. Um, and I just think it invites pressure for me. So it's a mentality thing, I think, a lot of the time. That's that's the problem with Southgate. He's got his favourites, and yeah, yeah. And you can sit like Sterling, Rice. That's true. I think with Sterling, I think he at times. He gets hard done by because he does really well for England. True. You know what I mean? He does Absolutely. He does do well for England. Um, and Sorry, he's still only 26 years old. He's probably one of our best players. But you know what the media's like. You know what, you know, perception and subconscious people, their minds. And I think, uh, uh, like me, I'm playing Sterling all the time because he's going he's gonna to produce for England. Um, whereas others don't produce and they still play. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, I agree with you. I, I, I would, I would always play Sterling. I don't understand why he, the frustration towards Sterling when he's been one of England's best players mm. in terms in qualifiers. He's he's shown up in tournaments. He's shown up. I'll tell you one player that hasn't shown up so far, which is right now as we speak, Harry Kane. Yeah, didn't didn't show up against the Czech Republic. Did not show up against Croatians, and he also didn't show up against um, who was the, the Scotland. I'm, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, but what is going on with Harry Kane against Czech, especially? I think it's two things. Either he's still f- feeling that Mourinho's um 
mentality that he was chopping back too much tough. And I've seen him chop back a lot. And there's certain ball that I, I don't know if I liked one ball to someone that we had, it was against the Croatians. It was a very nice ball. It was Sterling, Rashford, and I can't remember who was, else was there. And King was at the back. And I was saying, but you are the main man. Why ain't you there? I don't know what's going on with Ken. I love Ken. You know how much I like Ken. I've said he for me he's the best. For some reason, I don't know, or maybe he ain't doing it this time around, this end of World Cup. What it is, what it is with Kane is he's he's, he's not like you say hundred percent on song, but he's so used to getting chances created for him or him being the link in this England team. It don't it's it don't work that way. The way that Southgate is set up, if you see him, sometimes he's gonna he, he has to come out of his natural position to go and create something. So then by the time the ball gets in the box, he's not in the box because he's had to go in areas he doesn't really want to go into. So Harry Kane, like you say, he's first on a team sheet at times. He's gonna get your goals, but you can't score goals if you're not in the right area of the pitch. Yeah. And for me, Gareth Southgate has to build the attacking philosophy around Harry Kane. At the moment, he's yeah. not doing that. Most definite. He's not, he's not doing definite. that at the minute, yeah. And I think well, Kane's yeah. suffering from that. Um, and you, your confidence goes a little bit, uh, and then you lose that extra yard, and then it becomes a problem. So, sure, sure. Would not be surprised, though, if he scores two against Germany, because he's world-class finisher. So it would not surprise me. I am. Um, I think. I just think like I think Mourinho's changed his game, and he's you know yeah. he wants to come and get yeah. the ball. He needs yeah. to be in the box. Like, like need, yeah. he needs to be in the box. He refuses yeah, to be in the box. In the and box. if you're not in the box, how are you going to score? Mm. Exactly. How are you going to get he goals? He and he's one of the change. best. He never needed to change Kane's game, but Mourinho thought, "Oh no, I'll try and get him yeah. to be an all-round striker." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's like well, the Spanish boy. Do you know what I mean? In the box, boom, what well, goal? Mm. You know it's going to be a goal, and he can do that. Don't get me wrong, he can do that. Like, he's got yeah, top assists in the to Premier League. However, yeah, yeah, yeah. for England, I don't think he needs to do that. No, Let like everyone else do that work for you. Yeah. But then, if he goes to City, is, he go is Pep going to want him to do that? He ain't going to want him to do that. We want him in the box and go, no, let them do that. You just mm. put it in the box. That's but the thing about Pep, he loves the false name um, player. Yeah. Well. So can, can play that. Kane dropping yeah. a bit deeper to be really important in the game, I think, I think Pep will love that. Yeah, I really think he would. You definitely if, like, if, they go for him, if they go for him, I, I can't see him getting Grealish and Kane paying two hundred million for both. I can't, can't see it. Nah. They might do it, but I can't see it. Yeah, I think it's too much money anyway for for Grealish. That's for sure. But that's another yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Guys, another player that did do well in for England against Czech was was Saka. I, I believe he won man in the match. Yeah, yeah. Done exceptionally well. I'm a bit disappointed because um, I really wanted Jaden Sancho to get some game time. And I just thought to myself, like you were saying, like Francis, our manager is defensive minded and he thinks defensively. And I'm just, I'm astonished the fact that you want to score goals. If you've got someone like Kane, you've got a player who's got 90, a nine, about 19 goals, about 20 assists this season. And, it, and it's not like it's a, it's a one time off. He's done it this, the previous season in Bundesliga. And the season before that, it's astonishing how Jaden Sancho is not playing on that wing and and helping England to create opportunities to score clear cut chances. I don't know because I just thought that as much as as well as um, Saka played well, I just feel like Sterling. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Sterling. I mean, Jaden Sancho is supposed to be playing more game time. What do you guys think? I think you don't trust him. <laughs> you don't trust him he doesn't trust Jack Grealish and he doesn't trust Jadon Sancho and that's why they're not getting minutes the only reason really Grealish has got minutes is because the media yeah. and Mount had to isolate otherwise yeah. Jack Grealish was only yeah. doing cameo roles he wouldn't he yeah. wouldn't be in that squad if it wasn't for media Jadon Sancho is another one he has to put him in the squad to obviously so he don't look like you know a clown if, if things go wrong and everyone was saying why didn't you pick him in the squad but other than that, he don't trust him. Don't trust him. He doesn't trust Jack Grealish to do the other side of the work, and he doesn't trust Jaden Sancho. He trusts Saka, and that's why he's gave him the minutes.
but he doesn't trust Jaden Sancho because realistically, he, he's tearing fullbacks to pieces. Yeah, for two True. seasons, embarrassing them. So, international football is the slowest football you're going to mm-hmm. play. So when you've got someone who's out and out winger and he's raw, just throw him in. But he's not, he, he, you know, he doesn't have to start him, but at least give him minutes. He, he, he don't, he, he don't like, he don't like the kid. Um, so you know, I, funny, funny I did thing say deserve like fifty it, minutes. The funny yeah, thing, yeah. I, I, I wonder if um, Gareth Southgate ventures outside of England and watches these players playing in Germany because the Germans are astonished the fact that Jaden Sancho and Jude Bellingham are not even starting. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that, for me, Jude has to start. For me, Jude has to start in midfield in that double pivot because you've got the player that can play box to box, who can also defend, and also who can play forward line passes, and that's what yeah. England need. And Great very good on the ball. He's different league. He is a superstar. He, he is different. With, the different. thing with Bellingham as, as well, not many, like, a few will know with like, but because he's young, he's got no fear. Yeah, you know I mean? no you're, fear. You're going there, just, always fine with youngsters, going there, you know. And that first game you play, you come on, I thought, oh, here we go. So, I mean, I've not seen a lot of Bellingham, Bellingham this year. I don't really watch German football, but... Oh, he's been you know, amazing. And in he's, yeah, I, I've heard of him. I thought, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. And then he come on, I thought, oh, yeah, he's, he's quite Start a good time. So yeah, but with with Sancho, he don't he don't trust Sancho. Um, I know it might be controversial. I'm not really a big fan of Sancho, but I don't, as I say, I don't really watch German football. But you know, I'm not. You know, if we if you're not signing, they're signing me, but don't they don't. But you know, I mean, yeah, no, we, it, definitely, we definitely need someone like that. But I'm not. It's funny you it. say that, Munzi, because I'm not. I'm not 100 percent of them. I'm the same. I'm the same with San. I'm not. I don't. I'm not saying he's not good. But I'm not overly convinced until I see him like do a you know, like Man City, for example, have first refusal on Sancho and they're not interested. So that tells me something's not quite right. Do you know what I mean? Um so yeah, I'm not sure. I'm all yeah, but you never know, they might come and they might absolutely tear it up. Maybe I believe maybe it's a, it's an attitude thing where they they've seen his behavior. Well, I say actually, I mean a behavior problem where He's a bit of a bad boy, just like Jack Grealish. Because I know, I know, guys, Southgate don't like Jack Grealish because he's a bit of a maverick. He's a bit of a bad boy. But then Foden, he got he got caught, and all of a sudden, no, it's Foden all right. He's a, he's a darling. He's a darling. He's it's yeah, fine. Exactly. It's fine. <laughs> him and him and Greenwood got caught. Yeah. Greenwood get pushed down the boat. Oh, oh yeah. he's, no, you don't see him. And Foden's mm-hmm. like, because he's got a gather haircut. Do you know what I mean? He gather haircut. <laughs> well, that's. Uh, that's football politics. I can tell yeah, you that. That's politics. football politics. Yeah, and, <laughs> and let's just remember that he's the one with the with the kid and and girlfriend. He's the one that's cheating. Yeah. Well, well Mason Green yeah. don't have a woman. I mean, well, that's he did. He, does, he doesn't have a child. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's football yeah. politics. That is that's politics. definitely football politics. Yeah. So the the thing like Sancho, like you say, I, I suffered from it when I was playing. Yeah. You know, if you've got a little bit about you, you know, mm-hmm. I remember one manager said to me, if I stopped wearing my earring, if if I kept wearing my earrings, I wouldn't play. Wow. He dropped, he dropped me because <laughs> I had two earrings back in the day. Wow. I, I know a kid, um, I can't name his name, but obviously I used to look after him agent wise. And we was at Liverpool and he got, he signed a contract and the head of the, the head of the scouting or the head of like football director of the, the under 21s said, <laughs> Be careful what car he buys. And I was wow. like, what, 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 like, what do you mean? He's going to get whatever car he wants. He come from a well-to-do family anyway, so he liked his, he liked his flash wings. Anyway, he, got, he, gets, he gets a little Mercedes A-Class at the time. And he gets dropped till he changes his car. He had to change his car to a Corsa. That's football wow. politics for you. <laughs> You're I not playing unless crazy. you take your earrings out. Wow. And I don't mean take them out for the game. I mean take them out. You I can't mean, wear them no more. So, Sancho, if he comes in with one trouser leg rolled up, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> a Richard Melee watch. We know our black man roll. A Richard <laughs> Melee watch. Some managers, it, 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 I don't know what it is. It's just lack of understanding of culture, cultures. And Southgate, and a lot of managers do do suffer from that. And it's subconscious. They don't know they're doing it. That's the scariest thing. It's a subconscious thing. But yeah, Southgate yeah. never, you know, Southgate never done nothing at a club level, did he? I think he got middle yeah. by relegated. So that says a lot for him. 
He should never be England manager anyway, full stop. No. That's what I'm but Francis, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Francis, I'm actually a bit quiet today. I'm listening to the things he's saying. Like It's like I'm listening behind the scene. <laughs> like, I'm actually a bit quiet. I'm just listening. I don't mind. You like, believe, uh, listen, like, 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 things, some things that you be saying. I'm it's got that like, tender wow. voice, isn't it? It's got that tender like, voice. You, just, you could just listen to it all day, couldn't you? <laughs> so I've got them on. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look, we all love this spot called football. But some of the things you just mentioned, I don't even know they do exist. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, but now you're saying it, I can... I'm saying... Mm. Football politics, it's 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 terrible. That's why most footballers fall out of love with the game for a short period of time when they retire. Uh, uh, and then they start to get it back when they get over the politics of football, yeah. yeah. It's politics in all sport. Like, I play, I play grass and bowls with politics and that. Yeah. Anyway, the workplace, any job, anywhere, just politics, politics everywhere. Definite. Wow. wow. Well, let's guys, let's move it on. Of course, we've just spoken about the England guys. Well, if you're watching on the playback, please let us know what you thought of England's against Czech. Also, remember to smash the like button and also remember to smash that, well, press the subscribe button and also share. But moving on into the Euros 2020 weekend wrap up second round, we've had balls who got escorted out of the Euros, which was getting spanked 4 0 by the Danes. You know, Vikings, they don't play around, they really <laughs> don't. You know, they, they had. What's it, what's it called? Lothbrook. Ragnar Lothbrook, blood inside them. Yo, the Vikings, yeah, he was there, mate. Ragnar they was there. <laughs> lay. Italy beating Austria 2-1, which I thought Austria held their crown all the way up to the 90th minute. And then after, after that, you know, the quality came into Italy and then just demolished the Austrians. They were 2-0 up and then ended up winning 2-1. We also have Czechs in public who England only beat, managed to beat 1-0, happened to knock out the Dutch 2-0. And with Belgium knocking out the current holders, Portugal 1-0, Croatia themselves demolishing, getting knocked out, sorry, not demolished, getting knocked out by Spain in extra time, 3-3, three, three, four <laughs> times, and then after that, 5-3 in extra time. Guys, let's start it off with today's game. Spain versus Croatia. What a match okay. that I didn't get to watch. Oh, best game. <laughs> that was the best game. Best game so far. I had everything. Uh, I ran home just to watch that match and I made it. Yeah. Best <laughs> After game. work, I had run. It was beautiful to watch. Morata, thumbs up. All them critics. Yeah, yeah. All them critics. Morata, man of the match performance. He did any, everything, anything that guy did today worked. His passes, he he was just the guy. But it was a beautiful match. And I did say they were going to come back. I did say to my fans, I said, this team's going to come back. And when they came back, I screamed and she was like, what happened? I said, I told you. <laughs> and uh, it was just a rush. It was a beautiful <laughs> match to watch. It was a beautiful match to watch. Uh, absolutely, I, I I didn't get to watch it, so I can only go by the school and it was probably a mm. beautiful match to watch. I know there were some beautiful goals. I'm gonna watch the highlights. I was rushing home, but unfortunately, I got here. I got home. By the time I got home, the match was done. Mm. So I'm quite disappointed in that. Another game that we watched yesterday, we watched uh, the current holders go get knocked out. Belgium beating Portugal one goal. You saw Eden Hazard's brother, the one that scored the winning okay. goal. Oh, yes, yes, Togan Hazard. Belgium now, what are they looking like? The favourites, guys? Or oh, they still got a lot to prove? Depends if KDB's fit. He, he did come off injured, so yeah. he looked like he might be injured for the rest of the tournament. Mm. He looked like a bad one as well. Could be mm -hmm. ankle ligaments. And then Hazard pulled his hamstring as well. So if those two aren't playing, then I can't see them winning it now. <laughs> yeah. And another well, I, think, I think if um, well, I think if Kevin De Bruyne um, Bruyne don't play they ain't got a chance but as I've been in his hands his brother's better anyway but with, a, <laughs> with the way Portugal play just just watching them just all individuals all individuals yeah. Felix come on he's playing to play in left midfield Bruno's going get over there get over there and he's like no 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 and he's standing in the middle Bruno's standing next to him he's like well I've got to go over there just individuals mm. like now they had a better team this year than they did when they won it. Yeah. 
you know, just individuals mm-hmm. and Belgium just stuck together. Same with uh, Denmark. I don't, it'd be a tough team to beat Denmark with, you know, the togetherness and with Ericsson, you know, everything, you know, I can see them getting far, you know, getting quite far in that and seeing, I don't know who they've got next. It's on, has, it's on the fridge. Has Bruno been it. a disappointment, Monzi? Monzi, has Bruno been a disappointment? So far, because I feel yeah. let the let the Euros alight, but yeah, 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 but he's been playing out. You know, people are saying on Twitter and that he's played all year. You know, blah blah blah, whatever. But he's playing out wide. He don't play well out wide. He's got to be in that middle. But they're playing somebody else now. Do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, he, I think he's one of these players that wants to be. He, he wants to be loved. Do you know what I mean? He wants to be the main man, and Ronaldo's the main man from Portugal. So, yeah, I don't think he's had a poor, poor time. Until Ronaldo, maybe next time when they get somewhere and Ronaldo's retired, then he might, he might shine. But he's too much in Ronaldo's shadow and I don't think he'd be the like. Yeah, I hear that, man. It's just been really disappointing. You know one thing that made me laugh yesterday? It was Roy Keane and his rant on Joel Felix. A hundred million? If I was Ronaldo, I would grab him in the dressing room. That part made me laugh. Why does working always just straight away goes to violence in a dressing room? That's how he played, though. That's how, That's how he did he play. play. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 back then when he was playing, yeah, that that's how it was. Like you know, he's, your own players would grab you around your neck. It, there was no messing around. Then you know today's football, no one really wants to upset no one. Um, wow. you know, football didn't used to be like that, so th- that's why Roy Keane's always in. and he's right. You know, 100 million, mm-hmm. your team's one nil down. Don't get me wrong, I thought Belgium defended extremely well for 45 minutes. Um, but when you've got Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes, Silva, Felix in your squad, you've got to be producing some kind of chances. And they had the half chance, I think they hit the post, the, the header went straight to Courtois that he punched. Um, but Roy Keane, yeah, he's just got high standards. He's got yeah. very, very high standards. That's and, true. And I think it's because yeah. he thinks that modern day footballers, they wouldn't have been able to play 15, 20 years no. ago. They just weren't no. built for it. They're not built for it. And he, I think he gets a little bit frustrated. More so than with Pogba than anyone else. I think he's more jealous. <laughs> he's more jealous because of the money. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, um, I think so. He could I think be. He's more yeah. jealous of the money. Doing hardly anything all season and getting all that money. Yeah, that's what I think he's jealous. Of. He could be. I mean, he could be. That that's why he didn't really yeah. do well as a manager because his standards were so high and he was so in your face. Modern day players are soft. They can't. They can't deal with that kind of dictatorship. So that's why he's not a good manager. I have to. I have to agree. He, he didn't really do well. He, he he doesn't have that. No, he's a dictator. You can tell he's a dictator. Yeah. But his dictatorship. Wouldn't have gone well, especially when he was he was it Sunderland he managed at one point. Yeah, and, and it, it's and it, 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 it You know what's not everyone's meant to be a manager that used to be. No, no, he knew that's mm-hmm. why he's that's, that's why he's doing Podentry. Yeah, especially he's now you can't be. That's why a lot of old school managers are not managers no more. Yeah, look look what happened. Look at Mourinho. So. When he first goes to Chelsea and Porto, that management style works. Yes. Over 10 oh. years, you've got a new generation of football players who basically say, well, you can't talk to me like that. I ain't going to run around for you. Mm. So now, now Mourinho's tactics don't work with the modern day footballer. But yeah. 10, 15 years ago, it worked, you know? So, and football changes very quickly. Every 10 years, Definitely. you get a completely new set of a player. Evolution. Yeah. And I it's did say- every 10 years. I did say the reason why this young generation players are so good is that Ronaldo and Messi came out. And this Ronaldo and Messi, every single player wanted to be these players. Mm. So if you're competing to be Ronaldo and Messi, I promise you're going to be better than the most, most of the other players. That's mm. why we got so many good players. So many good players. And every single team is all doing good. It, the competition in football is crazy. And everything you just said is true. It's definitely true. It's just I love this part. I love what I'm saying. And... Mm. I did say Marina should have been Marina should have resigned. I think like two, three seasons ago. Mm. His football just went. See, I, I wanted know. him at Arsenal before Arteta. Before Arteta, um, I, I honestly think 
Mourinho's washed Mm-mm. up, man. He, yeah. he's, he's past it. Like, he I wanted him. to sit down and think about improving himself, the way he can improve his football. Because he's, he's outdated. His mm. old, his mentality, everything is different. The way he plays football, my they don't play football these days. Francis, you, you think said you wanted him at Arsenal? Arsenal? I wanted him at Arsenal before Arteta, yeah. Wow. You, and the reason I wanted him... The reason I wanted him... Oh, go on. Go on, on Monzi. Don't you think you'd be better in an actual duty uh, manager? Do you think you'd be better doing that then? I just think yeah, maybe I think you don't have to see the players every day. Yeah, and just like you don't have to spend any money on them either, does he? So, yeah. Do you yeah. Know, just so, you know, You've seen what he is like. like that documentary. Like the reason I wanted him at Arsenal because I thought he'd come in and he'd sort a yeah. few lazy people out. That's yeah. why I wanted him. Because people were taking, you know, what out of Arsenal. They, 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 they're... How can I put it? We, they've gone from we never beat we never beat you last season, so you've done something. They've gone from <laughs> being a, a, a winners to not winners now. Mediocre, we'll accept if we're okay. That's not good enough to be a football club. Oh, and I thought Marino oh. would bring a winning mentality in. Um, but then seeing the way that he was treating players in the in the in the the net the Amazon documentary and the way he was treating Delhi Ali and people like that, and I thought, nah, he his mind management skills have gone. This is modern day. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't treat modern day footballers the way you would have 20 years ago. They don't respond in the same way. They just don't respond. Different kettle of fish. Guys, if you watch, remember to smash that like button. As you are watching right now, the Swiss have gone 1-0 up against the French. But I'm sure the French will come back. Me, I believe in the French. Hope they not. will come back. You <laughs> hope not. Game of the week, hope guys, not. so far. The second round, obviously, we've got an England playing tomorrow. But my game of the week, I'm going to have to give it to the Italians versus Austria. It was a very good game. Uh, do you know why I picked that game? Because I saw Austria give Italy some problems. I saw some good football. And I, I was starting to think these Austrians are not that bad. And they were quite unfortunate to lose in the extra time, because in the, in, the, in the 90th minute, I thought that Austria were the better team against the Italians. They held the ball and they held their own comfortably. And they were just unfortunate to get that goal disallowed. It was offside, no I lie. But it's the, doing what they're doing, showing that they've got the quality in extra time to see off Austria. It's really well. I, I at least thought that was a good game. First, I'm going to move it up to you. you know, let me know what your game of the week for the second round was. It's got to be the one that we've just just done now. It's got to be Croatia. <laughs> it has to be entertainment. What you know, entertainment. Um, it. It, it, yeah, you didn't watch it. it, it, I, it, it. I mean, <laughs> Spain are winning three one on you know with yeah. fifty minutes to go. All of a sudden, you know, Modric then decides. You know, I'm just going to play now. I'll decide to just play. My country needs me. I'm one of the best players in the world. I'll just turn my on switch on, and he just ran the game for ten minutes, and all of a sudden. Croatia is it's a draw, and then they didn't have the legs. They had the you know they ran out of legs. They ran out of everything in extra time. But for me, that had everything. Great to see Morata score. Um, but yeah, I did like the Denmark um, Wales game. I've got to admit, I did like that game the way Denmark dealt with Wales. Um, but entertainment wise, has to be defending wise shocking. But entertainment wise, has to be Croatia Spain. And uh, Mok, what about you? It has to be the same game. Leecher was going to say the Belgian um, um, Portugal because I actually liked it. But it has to be today's game. Today's game is just different. It's beautiful to watch. And I got excited just because what we've seen in, on social media, what we've seen on these football blogs the, about Morata again abused by his own people and stuff. It just made me feel happy that it don't took quick Wait till everything finishes, then you can point finger at people. But don't point finger at people when the thing is actually happening. They can because then people they can change and switch like like, like Francis just said. Um, Modric switched himself up in the 80th minute, and trust me, Croatia was on fire. So Morata was just too much today. He's he's actually a good player, and I've always liked him. And Munzi, what about you? What was your game um, of the week? I'd have probably said to that 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 game, but I didn't see it, so I can't just say that. <laughs> um, I, 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 like the, um, I did like the Czech Republic game. 
Um, who did they put? I can't remember who they put. Oh, yeah, Holland. Holland. Holland, Holland, were, yeah. Holland were all over them, Czech public, and all of a sudden, bang. I didn't even know they had a goal scorer in them. But, mm. um, you know, and then the, the sending off, well, as, Ga- as Gary Neville said at the end, that was a youngster that just, he'd done that. If that was an experienced defender, he'd have let him go and hopefully a goal would have saved it. But he just, you know, because he was young, he thought, I can't let my team down. I can't, but it's probably going to be in more more crap now than he did back then. That, that yeah. if, he, if he let it go through, do you know what I mean? So he's probably going to get an entourage of Dutch uh, press on his back and stuff. But yeah, I just, I didn't think Jeff Pablet had it in him. Um, but yeah, like as, as people are saying about today's game, if I'd watched it, I'd probably say that one, but I did enjoy watching the Czech Republic game and then um, I watched uh, Wales getting hammered 4 0, that was nice as well. So, but yeah, Czech Republic <laughs> game, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> it's just a bit unfortunate that um, Dutch players got a man sent off. Um, delayed. Yeah. The leak got came off, and it was just so clumsy. But I knew it was going to be a red card because you know what? Everything looks worse in slow motion. I don't, I don't think it deserved yeah. the red card. But when well, he you did. see in slow he motion, he did. I don't. That's but... deliberate. He did. Even <laughs> full motion, you can tell he done it. As, as soon as yeah, it all happened, tell, yeah, I said it was yeah, a red. Yeah. I did see sure? it was red. Because he was yep. tripping. Yep. Things, things do happen when you're tripping, you know. He would have controlled his <laughs> arm. Depends which kind of tripping you're Trip. on about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did that. He did on purpose. He deserved it. He feel, oh, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's move it on to the England versus Germany. Big, big game tomorrow, guys. Which is unfortunately that is at 5 p.m. Guys, some yeah. of you may not be able to watch it. Um, I don't think the government wants us to go get home in time to watch this match. I feel like the government knows that we're going to get knocked out, so we've got enough time to go to the pub after the <laughs> defeat. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's what on, a like. on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. Yeah, so it's quite odd. I'm isolating. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> One of the host nations playing at 5 p.m. instead of an 8 p.m. I, I just don't get it. But guys, do tune in. It's going to be a big one. It's, it's a make or break for England now. We've got to score more than one goal because Germany can score goals. I, I know they're not the best. Germany hasn't been the best so far. But they again, they can score goals when they need it. And their players will turn up. You're going to see Kimmich turn up, which I believe is like a Philip Lahm 2.0. I know, I know. They, they look the same. Uh, they, they really do. I believe Kimmich will turn up. Um, um, Kai Havertz will no longer be shy. He's found himself. He's found his mojo. He will turn up. I just don't know. I'm, I'm really, really nervous for tomorrow uh, for England because we don't score goals. We've only scored two goals. I know we haven't conceded. And I would go for one nil again. But just the fact that we don't create enough chances and we can't dominate in midfield. And if you want to win this Euros, you need to have a midfield that can dominate. You know, it's really important that England pick a midfield, a double pivot or three. Why don't you play 4-3-3? Three, three, three? I just don't understand it. Or 4-3-3 three, three with one holding midfielder and have Mason Mount and, let's say, Phil Foden play. Or Mason Mount with Jude Bellingham and also Declan Rice or Calvin Phillips. If you want that deep line playmaker who can distribute from deep, and also defend, then go ahead and do that. I don't understand that. It's not that hard. It's not rocket science. I'm not a professional, but I play, do play a bit of football manager and FIFA. You know, <laughs> I got that bit of experience. But come on, all of you guys can see that. Like, come on, you don't need to play double pivot. It's what it is, guys. Guys, let me know. I'm going to start off with you. I'm going to start off with you, Amok. Uh, what do you think about tomorrow, England versus Germany? I'm worried. I like the German philosophy. The football, the way they play everything. They, I think they're quite gentlemen. I call, that's how I call them. And against England, you know, this country to have like good luck against Germany. It's like they always lose to Germany. The last time I remember they did win was really sc- was 4 0. <coughs> England won 4 0, if I can remember. But it's, okay. it's going to be a tough match. It is going to be a tough match. But do you know what it is? England got a very good team. It just depends on what this manager's selection is. I think this is the match for both um, Bellingham and Sancho. They've played in this country. They know how to use this, whatever philosophy the Germans are going to use tomorrow, they can use that to their own advantage f- for the English side. 
I believe it's going to be a difficult match for, for England, but in, I'll give England the upper hand just a little bit, just because Germany haven't been jamming for the past few years. And even in this tournament, the performance has been... So it's just going to be a difficult match, a very difficult match. And I just hope, fingers crossed, it is entertaining as well, because I know the Germans play football and I love the football. That's, that's fine. One thing I would like to say is that the Germans are not gentlemen. They get taught to annihilate. No. Not the way they just play. win. The annihilate the their opposition. <laughs> and they, they don't put in your face. They do in a smart way. <laughs> that's how they've been trained. To destroy, that's how they've been trained. Destroy, to annihilate. Do it in a smart teams. way. The Germans don't play. They're not, German, <laughs> they don't, they're not gentlemen out here. They, they're they're, they're they gentle. They, they even say it. We get trained to destroy teams efficiently. <laughs> You know, annihilate them. They don't Honestly, fight. Tomorrow, England, Germany. What are you saying? Yeah, I reckon it's going to be tight. Um, I don't really get nervous for England games. I do some United games, but I'm getting a bit old for that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be tight. Hopefully, England scrape it. But as you say, it depends who he plays. I just feel like if he plays two defensive midfielders, he's wasted. One player's wasted. But you know, if, if Phillips plays like he did against uh, Croatia, then you know, fair enough. But if he don't play like, if he sits back and, you know, don't, don't attack like he did against Croatia, you know, Germans are just going to think, oh, lovely, we'll just have a go at these. But as I said earlier, we've got to have a go at them. So, I mean, I don't, I think Foden's wasted out there. I think Saka played well. Hopefully Saka will play and, you know, but we need a bit of pace like right? Sterling and Saka out wide. Kane, he's not going to drop Kane anyway, even if everyone says we've got to drop Kane, he ain't going to drop him. Uh, get out of get out the defenders, you know. Cummels is 58, do you know what I mean? With Jordan's pension out, do you know what I mean? Get, get, get in at Hummels, that's what I say. But, yeah, it's going to be close. Either we scrape it 2-1 or we get put out by, on penalties. <laughs> uh, Rash, Rashford, Rash, Rashford will probably miss the, the penalty. Yeah. For, just some season it's out. Right, I thought right. I just a bit of Rashford in there. Yeah, yeah, you you see, what did Rashford teach you? The Rashford yeah. is normal. Um, uh, I'm used yeah, to this. Like, like, I expect that. I was thinking like, 51 season. minutes. I mean, 43 minutes we to say something about Rashford. I've been waiting. It took a while. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know you would be. I know you would be. I'm making sure I drop Rashford in every every uh, YouTube video I'm on. Yeah, you know what I mean? well. He pays well. me to say it, so I'll drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Francis, what about you? How do you think you're um, going to fare against the Germans? I think first 20, 25 minutes, it'll be like a game of chess. We'll probably be bored out of our head. Um, both teams trying to figure each other out, which you can understand. I can't see it being high scoring. I think both teams... Um, concentrate on defending a little bit more than they do going forward. I would say Germany are probably better than us going forward. They're a little bit more on the front foot. They don't really want to come sideways or back as much as we like to. Um, but it's a hard one to call. Uh, you, you know, knockout football, occasion football, they're one-off games. They're very hard to call. We've, we're, look, we're watching now. Swiss are winning 1-0. We're expecting France. We're expecting France because it's France because they're a better team to come out and score goals. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's so hard to break teams down. Like Munzi said, they play a three. They want to play um, Kimmich and Gossens very high. Gossens a big, big threat. We've got to be very careful of him. Makes late runs. Um which means there's going to be space behind Kimmich and Gossens. So for me, you've got to play pace. I would play Foden because I think he's our best player, one of them um, at least, because he's very clever. But if we didn't have any joy getting him behind because he's very technical and he comes feet, I would then look to bring Saka on. We've got five substitutes. You've basically got another team if you want. Yeah. Um, and I think people forget that a lot of the time. They want to try and win the game in the first 20 minutes. Can't, can't really do that. You need to. It's a game of chess. He'll definitely play two holding. That's what he does. He's not going to change that. He'll That's definitely cool. probably play Phillips and Rice. I don't think play he's going to as well if he plays two holding. Yeah, and he, and he, and he, he won't change that. Um, whether he brings Mountain for Grealish, I'm not too sure. Um, and I think... I, I, I think you bring Foden back in and I think you'll drop Saka. 
<clears throat> which for me, yeah. I, I, I kind of get where he's coming from because the Germans, even though they do play a three, we're talking about the Germans here. Mm -hmm. They ain't no mugs, you know. <laughs> they 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 know how to play the game. Hummels can't run, oh. but even Mbappe tried to outpace him. Positioning, positioning, positioning. So you got to be kind of like. Yeah. Like a fifty-eight year old. Exactly, you know, fifty-eight. He's moving like he's twenty-eight. So, <laughs> <laughs> but for me, for me, I'm I'm a, I'm because suppose because I was an attacking player, I'm very much. Attack is the best form of defence. Keep the ball, the opposition can't score. With England, we can't keep the ball. So get it get it English philosophy, which is get it in areas where we can run into. Tick attacker, we're not good enough. Yeah. We don't have that players. People rave about our players. They are not good enough. They are not world-class. People get blinded by the media. They are not yeah. world-class. Yeah. They are just good in the Premier League with 10 foreigners playing with them. That's all. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes is world class, but they're not. Yeah. yeah, he loves Bruno Fernandes. I don't think Bruno Fernandes is world class yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I would agree not with yet. He is. He's our saviour. He's our saviour. He's our Lord and saviour, as most will say. You know, the Good one that came to save us. Kind of dying yeah. for our sins right now. You're my United fans. Here you go. Because I have this thing. Let's do this. Go on. Go on. If you had to get rid of one, Pogba or Fernandes, who would you get rid of? I don't get rid of Bruno. Bruno. The reason why I'll, I'll get rid of Bruno is because why? On the ball, he ain't that great in terms of um, passing and distributing. I know he gets the assist because, of course, he loves to play that wonder ball, I, I, the Hollywood passes and etc. <laughs> but in that whole 90 minutes, he won't perform. Pogba does perform. Pogba's vital. He's a far better player than Bruno. Sure, but Bruno. On the ball... Everything Bruno got the character, he's got the wow. leadership, he gets the, the, the record and he scored but goals. You, but you can see right now who's doing well in the Euros and who's not. Pogba, yeah, but Pogba's Pogba. Bruno scored goals, that's the difference between Bruno and Pogba. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, but that's I don't keep See, I always judge players on how effective they are. Pogba well, for me is not effective for Man United, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's Bruno not. Is. Oh, yeah, like I said, Bruno gets the goals. Bruno gets the goals. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was when he was playing, he was a striker, so yeah. it's always yeah. the it's always like, the goals. It's Bruno the goals. gets the goals. But I see I, 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 I never would get rid of Pogba. I never would get rid of Pogba. I never I would never. Pogba's I've overrated. Got well I've overrated. Got I've got a question. You can't get yes. him. You can't get him. Go ahead. No, let me have this. Um, would you would you world class at your charity game on Sunday? Uh Mr. Green. Yeah, which is well second I think, off I think, the, I've the seen the a picture of it, yeah. Seen a picture, a picture of it, yeah. Yeah. The old yeah, the, the old picture. ones, they, they they were pulling hamstrings and the calves and everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kevin Nolan, Andy Reid. Andy Reid he was all right, but they yeah, Marlon Earwood. Um, but yeah, it was all right. Just I played the little centre mid, deep midfielder, spraying it 50, 60 yards now. I don't run around now. No, you don't run around no more. It was it was good it was for a good cause though, is it? Oh yeah, yeah it was yeah, uh, see it. yeah, it worked for a good cause, so yeah, massive, massive yeah. day. I think I think they've got maybe earn about fifty grand from the day for the charity. Yeah. So yeah, it was a good good turnout. Sky were there, you know, all of the BBC and all that were there. So it was really good. It was really good. What was the charity for? So Gary Bertles, he's like a forest legend. He, you know, I think he won the UEFA Cup back then, like equivalent of Champions League, didn't they? Um, yeah. his wife sadly uh, had cancer and she passed away unfortunately about you know probably 72 hours ago now so the game came a little bit too late for her god bless but um yeah so it's for it was for the treetops hospice who she did a lot of charity work and looked after her for so it was a really good day it got a lot of publicity as well which was helped um yeah and des walker played in you still couldn't get past him. Like it was unreal. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so, no one could get past him. He's 50, I think he's 56. And some young lad tried to run past him. He outpaced him and outstrengthed him. He's 56. Wow. He's a bit younger unreal. than Hummel, though. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this this Hummel slowly doesn't stop. Guys, no, you got like Hummel's monkey, though. 
Wait till he yeah. scores the winning header tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll be on Monzi. I'll be on you. Monzi, if Hummels scores the winning goal. Put a 10 on it. Put a 10 on it. Hummels will score the winning goal. But yes, guys, <laughs> we're coming close to the end of the show. My last bits and bobs, which is question time, guys. And this week's question happens to be the most iconic, iconic goal in Euros. Yes, that's the question for this show this week. The most iconic goal in Euros mm-hmm. that you have seen. And I'm going to start it off because I always start it off. You know, I like to set the, <coughs> set the pace. The most iconic goal for me in the Euros has to be France versus Italy. Extra time. David Trezeguet. He just took out my mouth. Goal. <laughs> that was the last time you ever seen such thing as a golden goal. You know, I didn't even know he existed. I used to watch his match thinking, what? Why is everyone celebrating like this? Doesn't he have another <laughs> yeah. time? Yeah. 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 Like, what's yeah. going on? This is golden goal. I was like, wow, winner takes it all. But guys, that there, the goal itself was exceptional. France was very good in that game, in the tournament as well. But that, to me, there has to be one of the most iconic goals I've seen in Euros. I'm going to have to move it up to my next Francis, my special guest. What was the most iconic goal for you in the Euros? I don't know if it 100% was in the Euros. I can't remember. It's when I was a a very young kid. Um, But Marco Van Basten's volley. Uh, I remember that goal. Yeah, and I'm sure it was in the Euros. I've never seen anyone score from that angle before. Yeah, it was. So that's yeah. probably the best, most iconic. The kit was awesome as well. It was yeah. unbelievable finish. I don't know how he scored it. I still don't know how he scored it to this day. But for me, that was the most <laughs> iconic goal for me. But Trezeguet was up there. The shape, everything. Yeah. Everything. And the moment of it as well. Final mm. golden goal. <laughs> golden goal. I miss golden goal. I still like I, I know. I know. I don't oh, know why. The it World Cups. I don't know why it stopped. Yeah. Was it? What about you, my friend? Um, I'm probably going to say um, Poborski when he scored uh, that scoop over Victor Bar. I think it was Victor Bayer, wasn't it? Uh, they played Portugal. It was a good goalie, that Victor Bayer. And it was, yeah, he just scooped it over the top. We were doing it forever at school. When we was at school, we'd do it. Everyone was trying, oh, how's he done that? How's he done that? Of course, then United brought him off it and he was crap, wasn't he? But, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> when was that, 96? Yeah, yeah, yeah you were 96, yeah. Yeah. 96, yeah, I think that was, that was iconic. Yeah, I, I did like that. I did actually like Poborski, but it was great. <laughs> and Amok, last but not least, I know this one's going to be a bit difficult because everyone's taking all the good goals and I've taken your one. I'm taking my one back. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking your one I'm too young. To, like, I'm, I can't really remember the Poborski one. He just mentioned, I think I was five years old or four years old. And Francis Gola, I don't remember. Like, I f- think I've seen glimpses of it on YouTube. Oh, Bass, I, have to, I have to go watch it again. So I think I was too young to experience what they experienced. I have to stick with what you said before, the Tres Gay. And you know, I support France. You know, that goal means a lot to me. Even though he's not French, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not French, but I support French. Like, because when I, as a young boy, watching football, Zidane made me love football. So... Just because he he played for France, made me support France. But yep, that goal was beautiful. Like you said, we all missed the um the golden goal. I think another team got the golden goal as well. Was it Senegal? Yeah. Senegal in, in, in the in the in the World Cup or Turkey? Germany I can't got, remember who. Germany got a golden goal in the United States. Brazil, um, I think Brazil got against off. Turkey. Yeah, Beerhoff got the golden goal against Czech I, Republic. I, showed it on the telly. I can't remember, but I think and that's how they won it. Was special yeah. though. I mean, look, if you were still alive, you would have probably said Paul Gascoigne against Scotland. That goal there was too much. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. That was for England. It's one of the I- iconic goals for England. Yeah. For sure. Well, unfortunately, uh, it is what it is, guys. We have <laughs> thank, like first of all, we have to thank you as we have come to the end of the show. We'll, again, we'll, you'll see me sometime this week again for my match reaction tomorrow. Do remember to catch that. This is the part where we. Plug in the rest of the guys to, so you can find out where you can find them. I'm going to start off with Francis as he's our special guest. Francis, where can the people find you? Yeah, well, we just started a YouTube channel so you can get that. So over on FFTV um, and on Twitter, um, it's just Franny Green 6. Um, and they're the only platforms that I am on. So, yeah, come and check it out. It's a new channel. 
um, good content, a lot of analysis, um, etc. And uh, I will say a different a different view um, than a lot of people out there as well. So yeah, come and check it out. That's FFTV on YouTube. Make sure you guys check it out. Make sure you subscribe to FFTV. It's also on the description of this show. Just click the description and you'll find he's the link to his channel. I tried to add him on the mention, but for some reason, I it's not working for me. I spent <laughs> some of my time during the show like, well, why can't? And like, I'm subscribed to the channel. I'm like, what's going on? I have to put FF, <laughs> Space TV. Is it big caps FFTV or is it small caps? Yeah, I, I don't know. The whole, YouTube, YouTube, the whole YouTube, thing. And it, he still wasn't appearing. <clears throat> I don't get it, but guys, do remember to look in the description. The link to his page is there, so press that and subscribe to FFTV. You will enjoy it. I will also be watching. I have subscribed, but I haven't watched my first show, but I will. <laughs> because at, at the end of the day, I do watch a lot of Manchester United content. And if you're not a Manchester United, you have to have something that's different. But I will watch. Munzi will be back in a bit. I don't know what's happened. I'm, where can the people find you? I know from the Instagram, pretty flaco underscore sixteen. FFTV. I have to. FFTV. It's very simple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Should should. I think something to do with the algorithm. Sometimes it doesn't pick it up. So. I see. I see. I see. His well, is. I don't know if I. Well, guys, you can find Munzi on his Twitter page, which is up uh, with Jesus. Do I even know his Munzi Munzi <laughs> Twitter page? While I'm promoting him, uh, let me just get that straight. So his Twitter page is at Finley Munzi, where you can follow him. Also, you'll also find him on the Manchester United agenda. To, uh, I believe he said he'll be on on Wednesday. And also, you can find him on Rich Sports as well on Tuesday. And so at times, you can find him on this channel as well, guys. Also on the comments, heavily involved in the comments as well. With me, guys, you can find me on my Instagram page, which is my personal Instagram, which is Ivorian underscore Spice across the Twitter and also the Snapchat. Remember to follow the official Instagram account of Red United TV, which is Red United TV One, baby. And also remember to follow the official TikTok account, which is Red United TV. Last but not least, to my <laughs> ladies, my ladies, as you watch me all the way to the end, I check my other group, other group. Well, I can't even say it properly. My other rhythm. Whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever. And I noticed that you ladies, you watch me all the way to the end. So I'd like to thank you for the guys. F you for not watching me. You're always flopping at one point. But again, to my ladies, remember to share the link to your ex-boyfriends. Remember to share the link to your current boyfriend. Also remember to share the link to the guy that's always been buying you lunch at work, hoping to get some, but he will never ever get some. And you know he wants some, but at the end of the day, you just, you're just <laughs> there to eat lunch. lunch. <laughs> you just, you're just there to eat lunch. And while you're just chopping and looking at him, thinking, you're never going to get any of this. Remember to share the link to him. Also remember to share the link to the guy that's been trying to move to you at the bus stop, asking you for your number. You've told him so many times that you've got a man. And out of disgust and anger, he's told you you're ugly anyway. <laughs> remember to share the link to him. And also remember to share the link to the guy that's been trying to move to you at the tube station, asking you for your number. You've told him several times that you've got a man. But he's always saying, but we can be friends though, hon. We can be friends with a lustful intention. Remember to share the link to that guy as well. And also remember to share the link to the chicken man that always gives you a free hot wing every time you go to the chicken shop. It's so funny that you never even order chicken and chips. You probably order burger, <laughs> but he always, always thinks in a, a wing and asks you for your number. But you happen to give him in your Snapchat and he's happy with that. Remember to share the link to him. And also remember to share the link to your dad's friends that's been looking at you up and down now that you have grown and you carry all the shit, all like that. And they tell you, my oh my, you have grown. And when you share them the link and they ask you, what's this? Tell them that you find a man that can do it way better than you. And that's Ivor and Spice. Till next time, guys. Peace and love from everyone on this show right now. Peace and love from Munzi. Peace and love from Amu. Peace and love from Francis. Till next can I, time. Can I just give one shout out to the uh, main night agenda? I'm on I really end. have for you. I've you did already. I on your behalf. I have promoted yeah. you. But go ahead and do that. <laughs> I can't hear him now. Oh, my Munzi. Oh, Munzi. come on. I was on a roll right now, you know. I was on a roll, Munzi, you know. You know? You know? We can't even hear you. Why? We can't even hear you. <laughs> Munzi, we can't oh. hear you. <laughs>
But guys, as always, um, Muzi, as always, I was trying to say trying that to say remember that. to go to follow him on Man United Agenda. Remember to subscribe to Man United Agenda. Remember to subscribe to Rich Sport as he will be on on Tuesday and also Wednesday. And of course, again, remember to follow his personal Twitter page, which is fin at Finley Munzi. Anything else, Munzi? Before I could, before I sign up, yeah, I said it all. Yes. Yeah. Okay, guys. As always, remember to keep it united. Remember to keep it free lines, and remember to keep it red united. We'll see you next time. Peace out.